next presentation, Holly Catherine Britton will speak on lexical variations in telling clock time, study of age and style differences. A lot of people think that language is static, that doesn't change, um, that doesn't say anything about them, but this is not true at all. Language reveals so much about you, the way you talk, the way you express things, all tells your age, your background, that sort of thing. So for my study, um, what I did was I looked for a new trend occurring in one of the most common areas of speech that you don't really think about, which is time telling. Um, so from a pool of Maryland residents between the ages of 14 and 70, I looked for how usages of analog and digital varied and uh, tried to explain discrepancies between the two generations and actually found uh, that my study indicates a current linguistic change from analog to digital time. A very, very distinct difference which could potentially denote drastic changes in the way that people express time. Okay, so now that I take you what I'm going to say, um, take you through some important terms that will come up later, different principles that will apply past studies, then go over my, uh, my methodology, the different questions that I asked during my survey, whisk you through at a dizzying speed through all the results that I had in the interest of time, <laughs> and um, look at some different changes, things try to tie it back up and then say possible implications that this might have had. So I did before, sorry, I said, looking at different uh, variants, analog or digital, in the way you tell time, how that varies between the five different age groups that I looked at. Um, also looked at which one was seen as more prestigious, how those groups were um, perceived by different age groups, how the older people perceived the younger generations, and vice versa, and see if that affected their language. Also looked at how people shift their language uh, to accommodate different speakers, whether they did it to seem smarter, which ones would seem more mature, that sort of thing. So what I believed um, was that digital variants would increase as age got younger. So each successive new generation would incorporate more digital variants. Um, and each group would view the variant that they used less frequently as the more prestigious of them. And that females will probably be the instigators of change. Females are going to be the ones that are more aware of how it works and are going to shift their language. In case you guys don't know, the differences between analog and digital, I feel like that uh, is an analog, analog clock. So he would read, you know, I don't know, 12 after 10, 12 after 11, that sort of thing. So quarter to, quarter after, not specific, while digital time reads straight off. So 1245, that's digital. Important terms that came up. Like I said, language defines us. That is the most important idea in this study, um, that we are aware of how our language changes, and it, it definitely qualifies you in a specific group. One thing that came up is called hypercorrection, for those of you who are not in linguistics. It's just when you overcompensate, when you try to appear to a higher group by using a form that they would generally use, that you might not necessarily use, um, but you do it to an extent that you actually exceed the group above you. Prestige is what I already talked about, which one seems more formal, which one you would try to incorporate into your speech to seem higher. And the digital age, which hit in the 1970s, uh, affecting speakers 30 and below. So this man is called William LeBeau. He is the father of sociolinguistics, pretty much has a couple important principles, but the one that was most pertinent to mine is that women adopt prestige forms at a higher rate than men, something I wasn't expecting to find in this given that it's such a small topic as, as the way you express time. J. Tony Pye did a past study in Quebec looking at analog variants and how it decreases with age in different generations. What he found was that since the digital revolution did begin in the 1970s, it was the under 30s that were primarily most affected. So the younger ones were um, ages 30 and below were the ones incorporating more digital time. So that's the background. So what I did is I interviewed 35 people um, from a pool of Maryland residents in five different age groups, randomly selected, um, half female, half male, roughly. And the questions I asked looked at what kind of clock prefer, if they looked at analog or digital, which one they use more frequently, um, who they would shift their language for. So um, if, if your language shifted from 14 speaking to somebody over 50, whether or not you would change it up, which one you spoke to with your peers, and how you perceive the language of other age groups. 
35 informants into five different groups, the first of which were aged 14 to 19, the second which were 20 to 29, the third one was 30 to 39, fourth was 40 to 59, and the last one was 60 to 70. These are divided up by the different digital ages. These ones hit after the digital age, these hit during, and this one was raised strictly on analog time, which will be important later on. Graph time. Sorry, I'm going to be going very fast. <clears throat> so this is showing clock use, which one you use in life. Um, there's a very gradual but significant change from the younger groups using all digital clocks to the older groups using mostly analog. Um, and this just goes, it was just important because if you're surrounded by the digital, if you use digital, bar uh, di digital barriers in your speech, you're more likely to have access to more digital stuff in your life. Uh, so it's just important to note that as age increases, analog clock use increases while digital decreases. The second graph is pretty much the same thing, just looking at the different preferences. Um, really, the, the first two groups stayed the same. They prefer digital clocks, they use digital clocks, fairly straightforward. The other three, though they use digital clocks, clearly prefer the analog clocks over digital, which definitely relates to how they incorporate more analog bearings, even though they still may use digital clocks in their speech. What's important to note is group three, which states an equal preference. They were the ones that were supposed to be most affected by it. But they reported that they have no preference for analog versus digital, which is not true at all from what they found. Graph B simply looks at um, the way you talk in society. So which age group uses what, if you use analog or digital. Same thing goes along with the clocks. Um, the first two groups hitting after the digital revolution use almost strictly digital variants. So they would say 1245. They don't say quarter of, quarter after, quarter till, anything like that. What is interesting to note is while the upper three groups would be expected just from that clock and from the digital revolution to use more analog variants, um, group three, instead of continuing in a gradual sort of thing, has a higher usage than group four, which is where that overcompensation comes into play. Um, they definitely differentiate themselves from the lower two groups. And when I asked them why, they referred to people who might be you know, only three years younger than them as those kids today. Uh, definitely incorporating more analog to try to seem older. Grassi looks at when you do use analog expressions, if you use them at any time, if you would say 10 after, anything like that, or if you use them strictly on the quarter of the hour. Now while groups one and group two don't use analog time very frequently, what this graph shows is how when they do use it, they're only using it on the quarter of the hour. So it's, they're already decreasing their analog usage just because there's less chances for them to use it. Um, group three again sticks out, overcompensating again over group four, trying to move away from that lower crowd, um, saying they use it any time. What I found interesting was the older groups, the oldest group, it is uh, 60 to 70, reported using it more on the quarter of the hour rather than any time. So group three is definitely the one that sticks out um, from group two, especially since they're complete opposites where they use analog time. The next two graphs looked at the social perceptions. Um, so in these, the informants were asked which age group they would expect to only use digital time. So which one wouldn't incorporate analog at all? Responses were fairly uniform. Everybody expected uh, the youngest group, at least, to use only digital time. Um, some of the groups also associated strictly digital with ages 29 and below. Um, one thing that is really important to note that I found really interesting anyway, was the way that group four incorporated the ages 39 and below as using strictly digital, even though in all of the previous graphs, uh, group three reported themselves as using strictly analog. So this, I mean, they love those in again with those kids and their fancy, you know, digital gadgets and stuff, which is why group three may feel the need to differentiate themselves even more because these are the people that they're going to be working with. You know, they don't want to be associated with the lower groups. So this one was the same, but seeing who would use strictly analog time rather than digital. Again, fairly uniform, 60, and, 60 to 70, 60 and above, um, and 40 to 59 were seen as using strictly digital. 
So I mean, even in the kids as young as 14, they're aware that these differences do exist in language. They're aware of how that is working, how they are perceived. Um, group three, again, incorporated themselves as using strictly analog time. Oh, and I am really behind on time. So taking you to the most important part. Um, okay. Oh gosh, two minutes is not a lot of time. All right. Um, the lower two groups incorporate mostly digital time, not a lot of analog time, while this is the close up. The ones that do incorporate the change that would shift, they're all female. Going back to what LeBeau said about women having more prestigious forms. Um, the males are not really in the picture of shifting at all, although it is important to note that even though women are the instigators of change, they too are moving more towards the digital time and forgetting that analog time could be used. Um, this is the most important graph of all of them. This is uh, how people would address speakers age 14 to 19. All of the speakers would address them in strictly digital. These people misunderstood the question. Um, <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. <laughs> they thought it was anyway. But even though it, it's clearly obvious that younger speakers are incorporating more digital time, they can't be expected to incorporate analog time when they're not even being addressed in it at all. Nobody's thinking to to use analog time in reference to them. So the only time they're getting input is uh, is that they're listening to speakers of older two speakers of an older generation. So the rift is just continually getting larger because even if they had been willing to use analog time, nobody is talking to them with analog. This is the formality of language. Um, as expected, each group sees the, the one they don't use as frequently as more formal. Um, very clear to see where the digital H hit with whether you see digital or analog as more formal. What's interesting is even though the, the groups three, four, and five see digital as more formal, it only counts as more formal if they're talking to people of their own age or older. Uh, otherwise, it, it makes you a kid. So if you're 30 and above and you use digital, it means you're you know, in a higher situation, uh, but not if you're a kid. This is a close up, again, demonstrating how women clearly incorporate more prestigious forms than men. Men are really not even on the radar at all, in all age groups. So this is stuff I already said. Um, so in the end, analog usage is steadily decreasing, quite obviously, and if it keeps continuing, um, it could essentially disappear as each progressive generation uses less and less, which means that we have a linguistic change in progress right here, <laughs> even if you don't notice it. And we already went through that. I want to look at how a job occupation might change it, uh, because military jobs, uh, jobs in medicine tend to use digital time, which may affect the way that those get incorporated. That's the end. So many thanks to, oh man, all right. Dr. Field, anybody who might be here, um, and especially if it came up, you were listening to my speech, rushed as it was. Uh, any questions? <laughs> Maybe no. one question. Sorry. I, I want to comment on your digital use that you, you couldn't really say questions until it came up. It's almost like digital. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Reliance. I just wondered what you, I, I didn't understand fully what was considered more prestigious, um, analog or digital. Exactly. Well, it, it changes. Um, it, yeah, it varies with each age group. So the younger people perceived analog as being more formal, which is why some of them might have shifted when they were speaking to people age 30 and above. But the older ones, since they use analog more frequently, since that's their commonality, um, they perceive digital as more formal, but only within that group. And where does grammar fit in? What do you mean? Grammar. Well, grammar, it's, I mean, technically it is 20 minutes after 7 o'clock and not 7.20. <laughs> no, but according to, to the grammar, which hasn't changed yet formally, so it's, it's 20 changing. minutes it's after. Changing. Yeah. It's changing. Yeah, but I'm just wondering, you know, the numeric, because it's 20 minutes after, not um, 7.20 means 20 minutes after 7. I actually have no clue. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> I mean, I would assume that it would change as well as I mean, it doesn't, everything. I mean, whereas um, 7.40 means you know, 40 minutes have gone since seven. Right. It's 40 minutes after seven, which we tend not to say. 
But we uh -huh. say six and a half, meaning a half plus six. So seven twenty means twenty minutes plus seven hours. So I think it's still, I think seven twenty is as correct as the grammatical sense. And I'm an English person. I love grammar. <laughs> right. You know what I'm, I'm saying? wondering but if you, if you, you were to write it out it. In, in language as opposed to in numbers and spell out the numbers, you wouldn't oh. write seven twenty. You would write twenty minutes after seven. And you would say 20 minutes. You wouldn't say 7, 20 minutes. 7 hours. Yeah, what do 20 people minutes. write? I wonder in formal writing. That's yeah, writing would be interesting. In novels, though, I use digital. Yeah. I've seen that. Dr. 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 Falco has a question. It ain't even that. This is, you, you did your study pretty much only in English speakers, though, am I right? Yeah. Yes. So it would be very different from what they think in French or Italian. Yes. Right. Everybody Which was. Yep. I mean, obviously, the prestige changes, if you want to call it prestige, depending on whom you're talking to. But I was just, you did at one point sort of show us a graph that digital time was on the rise. And that's right. true only in English speaking countries, or uh, you don't know? Well, I mean, I can't really extrapolate it out that far. Um, this was just in within my 35 people, I guess. Um, nobody really told it in military time. There were a couple. No, um, I mean just grammatically, it's 25. Oh, oh, I, I, no, I counted that just as, just as analog. I didn't look at those specific differences. That's geographical. Yeah. Yeah, that's regional. Yeah. Thank you very much.